Hello, I'm Atuba George, and it's so good to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, we've been talking about the instruction Jesus gave to his disciples just before he left in Mark chapter 16 from verse 15, but we're in verse 17 now. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. See, in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. See, Yesterday, we were talking about speaking in tongues. And you know, someone asked, did Jesus speak in tongues? Yes, Jesus spoke in other tongues. You see, if Jesus had not spoken in tongues, then the disciples wouldn't have known what it meant to speak in tongues. Now, in the book of Luke chapter 10, remember when Jesus sent out the, the, the 70, and then they came back. And when they came back, what happened? And they began to tell Jesus the testimony. They said, even the demons were subject to us by thy name because remember Jesus gave them authority to go cast out devils and to heal the sick the Bible says Jesus gave them power you understand so how did Jesus give them power Jesus must have released it on them must have laid hands on them now as long as they go on to carry out the instruction Jesus gave to them the power would work now then in, 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 in verse 21 Luke chapter 10. Look at what it says. When they were giving all this report, and the Bible says, In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. Did you see that? In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, Now, the one who's writing this is Luke. And Luke was a disciple of Paul the Apostle. And it was in Paul's day and in Paul's environment or Paul's part of Paul's teachings. When he says somebody did something in the spirit, he's talking about in tongues. Do you understand that? So when in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he says, If I pray in the spirit, my spirit is the one praying. If I pray in tongues, it is my spirit that is praying. See, if I sing in tongues, it is my spirit that is singing. So you say, what is it then? I will pray in the spirit and I will pray with my understanding. I will sing in the spirit and I will sing it with my understanding. So what does it mean to sing in the spirit? It means to sing in tongues. So when, when Luke, now that's Luke's upbringing. That's his mentality. That's how he, they were trained. You understand what I'm saying? So when he said, Jesus in that hour rejoiced in spirit. And then he said. So the rejoicing in spirit what does it mean? It means he rejoiced, he exclaimed, he, he said something in excitement in other tongues. I, I hope you're getting this. So when, when they just, you know, Jesus, they, they just tell, were telling him this testimony, say, hey, don't rejoice that the demons are subject to your name, but rejoice rather that your name is written in heaven. Then he just went around and said, hey, labo shakata labradi, yeah, hey! You know, like we do today, praise God. When, when you hear something that excites you, you know, you just do, hey, wow, you know, this is, we don't do wow, this thing is exciting. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? We go label, hey, ah, tell me more. <laughs> you see, that's how we express our excitement in the spirits. So that was exactly what Jesus did. And when he was done with that, he spoke out the interpretation of what he just said in the Holy Ghost. That's what you read in, in, in Luke chapter 10 verse 21 so this must have been a common thing that jesus did amongst his disciples i'm sure that's part of the reasons the disciples came one day and said master teach us how to pray <laughs> see and that, that's part of this he now told them that look when the holy spirit comes he will teach you because this one i cannot teach you nobody can teach you how to speak in tongues it is the evidence of the Holy Ghost in you. It comes up from inside of you. Just like if water is in the pipe and you try to lock it for long, one day, depending on the pressure, it will burst. Now, let me just jump into this, the next part. You know, Jesus said something here. He says, they shall take up serpents. Wow. <laughs> they shall what? Take up serpents. You hear me? If the whole, you know, it's just amazing the, 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 the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But many people don't even understand it. 
You know, he says they shall take up serpent. That means you are not afraid of anything. See? No evil. Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, he says, Behold, I give to you authority or power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. How, how is that possible? Yes, it is possible because the Holy Spirit is inside of you you've been baptizing the holy ghost and he is right inside of you he's not telling us to go practice how to charm animals no he is telling us see we do you know the same spirit that made you is the same spirit that made the animals so when we agree in the spirit to walk as the spirit of god is leading us it's so easy for, you won't be afraid of dogs you won't be afraid of animals. They come under your command. Because in the beginning, the one who created them and the one who created you, who is the Holy Spirit, commanded you to have dominion over them. So here he said, dominion over other animals, other creatures. That's what he was referring to. So who will exercise dominion? So a believer, you shouldn't be afraid of dogs. If you're still afraid of dogs, no, this is a cockroach. Can't, can't stand cockroach. Cockroach walks in, you jump on your chair or on your bed. Come on! Hmm. I've got to stop here. <laughs> we'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.